Swapping Scales for Suave, Chapter 3, Part 2 Well, we're here, Spike exclaimed, the smile falling away from his face. The Kilted Hen. And... Rarity's eyes narrowed. Dusty Tomes Antique Emporium and Pawn Broker. You know, I probably should have read that before I walked in. Spike murmured. Rarity sighed. Well, no helping that now. Let's keep moving. Right. Spike agreed. Rarity tentatively reached for the handle, stopping just long enough to look around in search of an open sign. When she found none, the dragon tugged at the entrance, which easily swung outwards. The pair shared a look as well as a shrug before walking inside, Spike in front while Rarity followed close behind. This is quite the place, Rarity murmured as she looked around the cramped and poorly organized room. Spike nodded. It has a unique charm to it though, doesn't it? Like something out of a novel? It rather does, Rarity admitted. I feel like the hero would likely receive some manner of magical item to aid them on their quest here. Or something that seems amazing on the surface, Spike added bitterly. Rarity merely nodded. Following the flickering line of candles, the pair proceeded towards the back of the store, stepping over piles of armor and stands of books. The walls seemed too close in around them, leaving the pair feeling oddly claustrophobic due to the closeness of the dust-covered shelves. Thankfully, it didn't take long until they reached the back of the store, where a familiar-looking stallion was sitting behind the counter. The pony was idly polishing a breastplate while humming a soft tune to himself, one which quickly faded upon noticing that he was no longer alone. Oh, blast it. Did I forget to lock the door again? He inquired. I am afraid so, Spike replied. The stallion raised an eyebrow. <sighs> well, I don't suppose you two are here to deliver that pizza I ordered an hour ago, are you? We are not, declared Rarity, who stepped up to the counter and pointed down to one of her fingers. We are here because of this. The stallion pushed his spectacles further up his nose and peered intently at the dragon. Oh, it's you, and I see the rings fit perfectly. <laughs> Why did I tell you? Yeah, that's nice and all, but I would have appreciated it if you had told me that they were going to make us switch bodies. Spike interrupted, stomping up to the counter. The elderly pony chuckled. Oh, so that's what they do. Fascinating. And how do you feel? I am absolutely ticked, my good stallion, Rarity stated. Though perhaps you could remedy that for us? Oh, I'm afraid all sales are final. He simply replied, leaning on the counter. I don't even care about the bits anymore, just switch us back. Spike demanded. Do I look like an archmage to you? The shopkeeper replied, gesturing to his humble clothing. You look like your sense of style is as old as half the things in here are. Rarity retorted. The stallion frowned, opened his mouth to reply, only to close it after he looked down at himself again. Oh yeah, that's a fair job. But I still can't do anything for you. Hm. Then we will be contacting our lawyers. Rarity exclaims, nose turned upward. Yeah, that's not going to work. Stated the stallion. And? Why not? Asked Spike. The stallion raised an eyebrow, then gestured over her shoulder. Read the sign. Spike blinked and looked above the rows of items covering the wall behind the shopkeeper. To where a very large sign stood, its words written in bright red upon a white background. Everything in this store is cursed in some manner. This warning must be prominently displayed and easily legible. If both conditions are met, then any potential buyer takes on all legal ramifications for their purchase. Refunds may be offered at the seller's discretion. How did we not see that? Spike murmured. Rarity sighed and ran a clawed hand down her face. Oh, damn it all, Spike. You two really are made for one another, you know. Snickered the stallion. <sighs> all right, so we've established that I'm fairly oblivious. Now can we move on? Spike pleaded. Perhaps you could tell us where you got these rings? Oh, an old unicorn mare sold them to me a few years ago. Didn't ask much either and merely told me that the ring bearers would be brought closer together by wearing them. The stallion explained, pushing himself off the counter. What did she look like? Did she give you a name? Rarity pressed, the dragon placing her bald fists on the counter. All my customers are given complete anonymity, and no records are kept of their visits. Replied the stallion, who shrugged. Sorry, but you should probably just keep living your lives as you would normally. These things tend to work themselves out naturally. <sighs> but I don't want to be my fiancé! Rarity whined, and the stallion chuckled. <laughs> well, that's too bad, because it looks like you're stuck like that. Unless you know some super powerful unicorn or are close personal friends with one of the princesses. Rarity gasped and clonked a hand upside her head. That's it! We can get Twilight to fix it and should that fail, I'm sure we could visit Celestia. Tia would definitely make some time for us. Spike exclaimed. Wait, you two know Princess Celestia personally? Asked the stallion in a shocked tone. She helped to raise me for most of my life. Spike declared. The stallion chuckled awkwardly and tugged at his non-existent collar. Um... 
Maybe I could do that refund for you. Whenever you get those rings off, anyway. Not good enough, Rarity stated. The shopkeeper wiped the sweat from his brow with a handkerchief. Uh, how about I... Uh, I give you one of my less cursed items, then. For free. What? We will not... Rarity began, only to be cut off by Spike, who lurched forward. What kind of items are we talking about here? Spike demanded, and Rarity sighed. <sighs> Gosh darn it, Spike. Hold on, Rarity. There could be something good here. Spike turned to the shopkeeper expectantly. Isn't that right? Oh, uh, yes, I have many valuable trinkets that you may find interesting, exclaimed the stallion. Ha, huh, see? And this time I won't pick anything super cursed. Spike stated confidently. Rarity threw her arms into the air in exasperation. Ah, <sighs> fine, do whatever you want. <sighs> I'll be outside. Oh, sweet. Spike turned back to the shopkeeper. So, did you have any swords? Rarity slowly shook her head as she watched herself fiddle excitedly with a large wood and metal puzzle box, on the top of which were four sets of scrolling numbers which could be turned to create different four-digit codes. Each side of the box had numerous pictograms of various events such as a battle, a feast, and even several creatures playing sports. I can't believe he bought your loyalty with a puzzle box of all things. You hate puzzles! Rarity exclaimed, the dragon barely containing the urge to yell. Yeah, but he didn't know I was in this thing. There could be anything, you know. Spike replied as he peered intently at one side of the box before gasping. <sighs> there could even be a set of non-cursed rings in here! Or it could be another cursed item that he wanted to get rid of. Rarity muttered as she watched a stallion walk down the train car into his seat near the end. Uh, nah, it's gotta be something good. I mean, look at this thing! It's like a bajillion years old! Spike replied, lifting the box proudly. <laughs> Maybe it's where Luna kept all of her love letters. Rarity remarked in a dismissive tone, leaning to the side and staring out the window of the moving train. Oh, you're just jealous because you haven't got a turn yet. Spike exclaimed, sticking his tongue out at the dragon, and said dragon sighed. <sighs> just wake me up when we get to Ponyville. Can do. Spike murmured, already peering intently once more at the strange box. I can only imagine that box as a curse where no one can open it no matter how hard they try. Now, I don't think that would actually happen, but if it does, oh, that would suck. Now, let's get on to our definitely not cursed donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Magazine, Crazy Killer 557, Dosbo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runescythe9852, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, McDoofus456, and many more blessed people. Thank you all very much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.